Uh, I'm Zhi Boliu from uh, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. And I'm here today to give a talk about our work titled uh, Decompiling X86 Deep Neural Network Excitables. So this work for, uh, was finished jointly by HKUST, Singapore Management University, and uh, uh, University of Alberta. So uh, first of all, what is the DNX double? Basically, DNX double is the, uh, the standalone binary format of the DN model generated by deep learning compilers. So it has exactly the same functionality as the original DN model. For example, if we, can, we, uh, if we compile an image classification model into the uh, DN executable, so then feed a image to the executable, it will return the same label. So basically, inside of the DN executable, the same DN inference is processed during runtime. So why we wanted to compare a DN model into a DN executable when we already have mature deep learning frameworks like uh, uh, PyTorch and uh, TensorFlow? So the main reason is that as, deep, uh, as DN models are getting more and more popular, sometimes when we wanted to uh, deploy DN models on uh, heterogeneous hardware devices, not only devices with powerful GPUs, but also low power devices, uh, such as IoT devices, edge devices, uh, smart wearable devices, and so on. So in that case, we want to leverage the performance potential of a specific hardware device. And to do so, the latest solution is to compile a DN model into a DN executable directly running on the hardware. And until now, many resources have, uh, from uh, academia and industry uh, have been devoted to uh, the research of deep learning compiler techniques. For example, TVM, uh, which is uh, probably the most uh, mature deep learning uh, compiler, uh, is supported by Apache Software Foundation and uh, uh, was originally published at OSDR 18. Uh, Glow is supported by Meta and uh, uh, Infusion, uh, which was published at OSDR 20, is supported by Microsoft. And currently, the deep learning compiler community uh, mainly focuses on the optimization to improve the performance of DNA executables. However, as a security researchers, we also wanted to uh, study DNA executables to learn the possible weakness. In particular, we wanted to know uh, what is the difference between uh, DNA executables and uh, traditional software? And how should we safely use deep learning compilers? Uh, and what are the potential security risks? For example, can we uh, do reverse engineering on DNA executables? And to be specific, we want to know if we should view a DNA executable as a black box or a white box. In other words, can we easily reverse a DNA executable into its original DNA model? So uh, this is a critical question. If the DNA model is uh, incomprehensible to the attacker, then we can safely deploy our DNA model, a uh, DNA executable, on the device accessible to the attacker. And however, if it's vulnerable and it can be easily reversed, then we should be very careful uh, because the attacker may be able to steal the model uh, for profit, and so we should uh, uh, avoid to deploy DN executables on devices accessible to the attacker. And we actually try to decompile the DN executable with uh, existing state-of-the-art decompiler. But the CFG of uh, generated code can be quite uh, uh, hard to understand. After all, there is no, no source code for the DN executable and all control flow are generated by deep learning compilers. So it's hard for a human to understand because they are not written by human developers. Also, the data flow of a compiler DN model can be very complex. Typically, the DN inference process uh, can uh, involve more than millions of 14-point arithmetic operations. So with so many over, uh, overwhelming operations, it's very challenging to figure out the meaning uh, of the decompiled code. 
And besides that, deep learning compilers will uh, also optimize the memory layout before the computation of each DNA operator. So as shown in this figure, before uh, optimization, the weights of a convolution operator, uh, they are sequentially stored in the memory and thus they are not aligned. So uh, basically deep learning, deep learning compilers will rearrange the layout and convert the four dimension uh, matrix into a five dimension matrix. And then the ICMD instructions can be used to compare uh, to compute uh, multiple uh, data in parallel and uh, also achieve better memory locality. So given the DNA-executable file in this work, we propose BTD, the uh, first DNA-executable decompiler. So we aim to analyze and extract the high-level uh, DNA model specifications, including DNA architectures and uh, pre-trained parameters from the D, uh, from the x86 DNA executables. So in this work, we assume we have a physical access to the targeted device. For example, if uh, the DNA executable is deployed in a smart device like a, a watch or a speaker, a cleaner or other devices, we can actually be uh, more aggressive to not only access the device, but also try to extract the a deactable image from the hardware device. And moreover, DNA operators are generally defined in a clean and rigorous manner. For example, no matter uh, what deep learning compilers are used and what, are, uh, what the model structure is, the semantics of a convolution operator should be always uh, the same. That means deep learning compilers may generate a distinct low level a binary code, but always retain the high-level seman operator semantics consistent. And besides that, one of the major difference between uh, DN executable and uh, uh, general software is that DN executable has only one valid execution path, which means no matter what the input is, uh, DN executable actually will do the same computation. So this actually gives us an opportunity to summarize the high-level semantics from a low-level code with a symbolic execution because uh, there's no more path explosion problem. So it's uh, quite suitable for symbolic execution to solve this problem. So overall, BTD consists of three steps, including operator recovery, topology recovery, dimensions, and the parameters recovery. So as shown in this figure, uh, in this workflow, we first disassemble the DNA executable with a uh, state-of-the-art uh, commercial to IDA Pro. Then with the three steps, we recover the full model specific, uh, specification. And in the rest, I will uh, start to introduce how we uh, achieve this. So in the first step, we try to uh, map assembly functions to DNA operators. To do so, we train an LSTM model to treat uh, x86 OP code as language tokens and use the byte pair encoding method, uh, which is initially proposed in the NLP field to uh, segment x86 OP codes. So basically we view this as a typical multi-class classification task. And after this step, each function uh, will have a label indicating its operator type. And in the second step, we recover the topology of uh, DNA operators. Uh, in other words, we try to connect uh, different operators into a computational graph. And as we observe the deep learning compilers, uh, we'll compile operators into assembly functions and uh, pass uh, inputs and outputs through function arguments as memory pointers. So in this step, we can simply hook every call site uh, and record the memory addresses and the connected two operators if one operator's input is uh, another operator's output. And in the third step, we uh, implement a trace-based symbolic execution engine to get the uh, human readable symbolic constraints. And before that, we also use tint analysis to remove unnecessary parts in the trace and only keep instructions related to the output. So given the 
extracted in a symbolic constraint, uh, we can actually summarize a set of heuristics to infer dimensions of the uh, DIN operators. And we provide an example here. So as we can see that symbolic constraints from uh, uh, different compilers and dif with different optimization levels, they are mostly consistent. And the science our, our heuristics are based on uh, the constraints. So our method is general and across, platform, across compilers. And finally, we infer dimensions of operators, of, of operators with heuristics. Then we instrument the DIN executable to uh, dump all pre-trained parameters. Uh, with all the extracted information, we can eventually rebuild a new, a new DN model showing identical behavior as the, the original model. And before then, I will briefly introduce how we evaluated R2. So we choose eight versions of three state of art different compilers, uh, including TVM, Glow, and, and Fusion. We also choose seven models in which uh, six are saving models uh, that cover all operators used in the saving models from Onyx Zoo. So all, all these saving models are real world models trained on ImageNet. And in the first step, we can achieve over 99% accuracy in all cases uh, when we recover operator types because uh, basically this is not a very uh, challenging task. And in the third step, BTD actually achieves 100% accuracy in most cases, except uh, two cases uh, in which BTD fails to recover the dimensions because of optimizations applied by deep learning compilers. So I uh, won't discuss too much uh, because of a time limit. So we can uh, refer to our paper for more, uh, more information. And overall, BTD is able to extract uh, uh, a functional DN models in most cases, except uh, the ResNet model compiled with TVM. So given the decompilation ability of BTD, in most cases, we can actually enable white box attacks on a black box obscure DN executable. And we released the BTD at GitHub with a, 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 a Docker image for demo purpose. And the BTD passed the, the artifact evaluation process with available functional and reproduced badges. So to conclude this presentation, here are three takeaways. First, uh, reversing the executables with existing techniques is hard, to, is hard due to complex control and data flow. And second, a DN executable has only one valid execution pass. And uh, that gives us an opportunity to summarize the high-level semantics with a symbolic execution. And third, we propose BTD, the first DN executable decompiler. OK, that's all for my presentation. Thanks for listening. And I'm glad to take some questions now. Thanks.